Is it my destiny to live and die a life of blind fragility? I'm just kidding. Where I see the love, she sees a friend. What will it take for her to see the man behind the tent? Welcome to the Brian Thomas Podcast <laughs> with the special effects by Renzo. There we go. I love it. Hi, Cassidy Nobler. There was a big jet that just flew overhead, it sounded like. Right? <laughs> right? From New York to L.A. So you are in L.A. You just got back from a big job we're not going to talk about, but thank you for coming on and doing my first – well, we've done other podcasts, but this is the first – kind of chill podcast we're going to call this the chill podcast right welcome to the chill podcast everybody just be chill don't keep it chill (laughs) i'm not trying to overproduce this with glam lighting and stuff like that so even though i had to clean up the studio just a little bit what are you is there a tree behind you i mean yeah it's like the forest you know i live in the forest so (laughs) i always feel i always feel much more comfortable when i have nature whispering in my ears so (laughs) so thank you for doing this better than not better than not is that what your shirt says oh better than most better than most okay it's a it's a it's a basketball shirt so it's like a you know it's like a a a team a team player being like oh yeah i'm better than a lot of people so i bought this shirt for that job and i wasn't allowed to wear anything they didn't have logos or labels. And I was like, perfect. This just has a saying. And then I get there and they're like, you can't wear this. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. I like this shirt. I don't ever wear pink. I'm not a pink fan. I put on the pink and I was like, this is better than most. That's funny. Like, yeah, yeah, let's keep going. And then, but so this is the first time I'm wearing it for the podcast. There we go. It looks good with your skin tone. <laughs> Pasty. <laughs> I'm feeling very Easter. <laughs> I'm feeling very Easter. You're fe- I'm waiting to see little Easter eggs behind you. You're me. feeling very Colgate and like a little blood from flossing. Got it. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm feeling very sweaty balls with this mic in front of me. <laughs> sweaty balls. Sweaty balls. It's the best SNL episode Oh, my ever. God. And when they do the cat one, too. That's really good. I don't know the cat one. It's a kitten one. That's good. Okay. All right, let's get into this. Let's get let's get into our first topic, okay. which is mindset. Mindset, mindset, mindset. I had 
a couple of things happened over the last few months during my transition here at the business. And it really was like on my mind a lot. So I thought, who better to talk to than Mr. Cassidy now? But because back in the day, I remember you really inspired me, even though you're much younger than me, um, on ways to be as far as developing your brand and who you are. And uh, I'm from the generation of market, market it, market it, and push it out, push it out, push it out. And you've never been about that. You've always been about the art. You've always been about being honest about who you are and mm. not letting the, the marketing business part. You said something, <laughs> I'll never forget what you said. You said, I said, it's a business, Cassidy, or something like that. And you get, you got to remember we're people doing business, mm -hmm. not business doing people. And I'm like, oh, fucker, he's right. <laughs> like Things like that. And I'm really seeing that now come into play more than ever. So I want to talk about mindset. And the topic is being paid your worth as an artist mm -hmm. and as a professional dancer, choreographer, and the amazing career that you've had and are still having. I thought you'd be the perfect person to talk to about this i mean i would yeah i can definitely tell you how i run my ship um and people listening don't listen to anything i say i'm a liar no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> marketing 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 <laughs> um go ahead yeah i just you know marketing <laughs> brought to you by kombucha trilogy brought to you by kombucha <laughs> um you know i think <laughs> I think the most important thing, as you're talking about, is mindset because everything in life is perspective. I think the hard part is deciding that you're going to be involved in a business that is highly um, manipulated, operated by money, by money and fame. And now that social media has introduced, you know, what's popular, what's trending, who's the new hot. I mean, it's kind of always been that way, but. I think when you decide to enter a cutthroat market, how are you able to keep afloat? And for me, that always comes from making sure that the engine, meaning the heart, the soul, the spirit, the mind of your vehicle, which is the outside of your body, is well lubed up, is, is running at uh, uh, the right speed, is running on the right fumes, is running on the right material. And I think as an artist, we always come into um, our craft wanting to express ourselves. That is what we do as artists. We have something inside that we have to get out. We have thoughts, we have emotions, we have um, perspectives on life, and it is to get it out. And I think when you decide as an artist that you just do it because you have to express yourself, it doesn't matter if you enter a cutthroat business. Now, the hard part I find is how do you maintain positivity in a business that is full of disappointment? Amen. Especially in the commercial world, as opposed to, I mean, it's across the board, but the commercial world, definitely. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is because I don't think a lot of people who are not in the commercial business understand how much disappointment you can face, meaning how many auditions you're going on a week, how many no's you are getting from people, um, how many times do you fight for something that they're like, no, take it or leave it. That's just what it is. So the hard thing is, how do you remove all the negativity out of the formula and just keep your art, your personality, what you do, your training, your, your success, how do you keep all of that in such a good space? And to me, it is all um, down to the input. How do you bring out love and kindness in your spirit and allow that to be your clothing that you wear in a business that is out to define you. Um, You're going really spiritual. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's hard to cross that in the, see, that's the, that's some of the issues that I've been facing as I'm transitioned, of course, into photography and filmmaking. And mm. if you guys know me, I'm from a dance background, also in choreography. So I'm in this realm of working with artists and there's a lot of collaboration, a lot of collab. I've collaborated with you. I mean, you're on my wall and I would never, <laughs> I would never think to charge you to like, you know, I, I do a lot of things for artists just because I was an artist. Mm. But at some point I do have a business. I have a space. There's things you got to pay your bills. So it's like, there's the capitalism, there's the art. 
You know what I mean? Like there's there's a place I feel for both. I think that's the main point yeah. of this conversation that I want to have is yeah. you said something also back in the day that I really appreciate and I still think about this. I said we were listening to music and I'm like, oh shit, you can just you can bootleg that up on YouTube or something. And you're like, I have to say, I can't say you like anymore because I heard this girl saying it the other day. She's like, oh my god, I like, oh my god, I like, like. So if I say like again, <laughs> hold on, let me let me do like a laughing thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's eight seconds. It's eight seconds of laughing. You have to correct me. Oh my god, I love I'm like, this. Thing. I'm like this audience. They were so, really into that. <laughs> oh my god. So basically, I told you you could bootleg this music for free. This was a while back, and mm -hmm. you're like, "Well, no, I want to support the artist. I want to buy their music." And I'm like, "Wow." Mm -hmm. That's pretty noble, especially at your age. You're much younger than me. I should be the one saying that. But, you know, everybody's like, yeah, you can do this. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's a great mix. I can just download that shit. But then I thought about it. And I'm like, dancers are wondering why they're not getting paid. Like we used to get paid in my day because mm -hmm. I was dancing in the 90s and there was a budget. There was no Internet to rip shit. So the record labels made a lot of money. They controlled everything, unfortunately. But they had money. They paid dancers much better. When I was touring with Michael... I remember we were getting 2500 a week plus our own rooms and everything was five star. I mean, it was Michael Jackson, but it was like, do you get that today in today's world? Is like, is that even there? Because this ripping internet thing, but long story short, you support art. And I think the karmic lesson there is art is supporting you mm -hmm. because you've lived your life that way. I've seen your career go so many different ways. I mean, you danced with Gaga, Beyonce, Katy Perry. I mean, who haven't you worked with? And you're doing so well, and you've always stuck to your cores, mm. which I think is really, really, really noble. And I look up to that. Mm. I, I, I appreciate that. You know, I think one, one common ground that we have is me and you continue to try to evolve, to learn, to grow, to be a different artist every single day, every single year. Um, you know, you're bringing up a good topic about how do we fund the arts, but then how do we also be selfish with it? You know, how, how does that operate? And I think that it is just balance. There does come a time where you have to say no to doing free projects for people if it's not rewarding to yourself. If it right. is a favor for someone, cool. It can be a favor or a favors, <laughs> a one or two. Um, but if you're not getting something out of it that's rewarding to you, then I think it comes down to, okay, is this work now as opposed to the art? Um, it is important that we as artists know how much we're valued and what we're worth. Now, kind of bringing this to the job world, it's very difficult for a new dancer or a new artist getting into the business. Why? Because you don't want to say no because you're trying to break into the business. You're trying to start to make money so that eventually right. you can say, you know what, this job isn't right for me, I'll wait for the next one. But when do you get that opportunity to say that? When do you get that kind of control and power? Well, you can have it from the beginning, but that also then could stunt your opportunity of getting in the door, right? So I've always found the hardest thing for me is sometimes biting the bullet so that I can eventually make changes in the business, right? I've made sure that I've worked with a lot of people and done as many possible jobs as I can do and, and stay current in this business for, you know, what are we, between 16 and 20 years, you know? And making sure that I can do that so that I have a name for myself that I can start to say, hey, these are things that need to change. I've worked in the business this long. This isn't okay anymore. Blah, 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 blah. But I think it also comes being able to exercise that muscle while you're on the journey and not just waiting till you get to a certain spot. I mean, me and you, you know, you've known me very well, and there's a, a few jobs that I gave up that were dream jobs for me because the money wasn't right, because we were getting taken advantage of while being a part of something. You, you did, absolutely. And the thing that I found with that is, being honest and, and standing up for people, not a hard thing. Being honest, standing up for people when it is your dream job on the line and standing there on your own, that is a difficult thing. 
but it is a muscle that has to be practiced. So the mindset going into it is, when you decide to enter a business that is not just self-driven, meaning like I'm not a, an artist in New York just doing my own artwork and gallery exhibits and blah, 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 cool. I am entering into a business that is fueled as a community, meaning every job that I do, every way that I act is not just a reflection on myself, but it's a reflection on the people who are there and the people who have come before me and the people who are coming after me. So I've decided to enter into a business that is built on a community. Now, every decision I make monetarily or wages or rights or whatever that is, is going to have an effect on the people that I'm currently with and the people who've come, who are coming up next. So I have to remember right. that the choices that I make are respectful and are thinking about what is going to better our future. Because you brought and up people a see you as difficult, correct? That, and people yes. see that as being difficult. When you're the one to stand up for people, yes. you're the one being difficult or you're being bitchy or you're that one guy that's got to have everything your way. And I'm like, you're just, you're like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, it's all mindset. I have to retrain my brain not to say like because mm -hmm. I sound like a like. like. <laughs> so where were we? My ADHD is kicking in. You were just saying so that like, some you, people you don't want to be that but, one, right? Yeah, like I remember when I was on tour, and all of a sudden we—I mean, it was a really high-budget tour. There was only five dancers. I'm not going to name the artist. It wasn't Michael, of course, but they wanted us to share rooms with like two other dancers, and I'm like, huh? Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, everything else is 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 bougie except for the dancers always get shit. And I was always the one to complain about that or call my agent or do something to try to fix that. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you know, you're taking a chance of not being hired again because you're fighting for everyone's right. And do you think the dancers have your back as well? Is there that sense of community in the art world? Or it feels pretty selfish sometimes, especially now with the internet and Instagram and this and that it just seems very segregated. I think it's a bit of both. I think it really de determines on one, what is your crew like, who you're dancing with? Are these veterans? Are these people who've been in the business and understand what you go through and are fighting for a better future? Or are these newbies? Are these people who have just gotten into the business and they're not about to rock the water because this job is important for them? Or right. are you also in a crew of people that may be foreign and are here on visas who need that job in order to make their money, in order to um, provide certification that they are um, in demand? as a dancer in this industry. That is part of their visa. So yes, there are both. The problem is, as you see when it comes down to the wire, that people will fall and fail and, and pull back. That is a hard one. And what I encourage or offer to people is really look at what you're asking for. Are you asking for luxury or are you asking for what you're worth? Because I think there's a difference in being like, hey, well, I don't really want medium rare steak, but I want medium well steak when you make it. Okay. What I would like is a gym membership. Why? Because I'm on tour dancing, so I need to have a gym every day. You know, I, need to, I need to have access to that. Great, cool. We're getting on, you know, we're doing this job and you're going to give us after show food. Pizza. No, not okay. That's not being disrespectful. What that is saying is, hey, I also have to keep my body in shape. So eating bad, not really an option. Do you know what I mean? Cool, I get to a hotel room. Ooh, a queen, can I actually have a king? It's learning to understand what you're asking for and really finding where that, um, where that falls in a category of like necessity or does it fall into like, I've gotten too big for my britches. And there really is no right or wrong, but I find that my mindset, I am empowered when I am standing up for things that I, um, one, that elevate my craft, two, keep me safe, Three, allow me to do my job the best that I possibly can. And four, is is respectful of what I've been through in my life to get here. You know what I mean? There was a time I got asked to do a Vegas show and they were saying you had to share rooms. And I was like, that's not okay for me. And the reason is because I was currently in a relationship. That means they may be coming out to see me and I'm a grown man. I don't wanna share a room for, for two or three months when the hotel has unlimited rooms and the show is there. And I had to just give up that right, job right. from the beginning. So that was a- Was it Britney Spears? 
It was Backstreet Boys. Was it Celine Dion? <gasps> it was Backstreet. <laughs> All right. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I, I, I get it. There's, there's like a happy medium. Mm-hmm. Don't you think like being paid kind of, even for new people, if we set that, like it's been this collaborative thing forever. I mean, when I was starting, of course, you, you need the credits. You can't get an agent if you don't have a resume. But how do you get a resume if you don't do something for free? Because people won't hire you because you haven't done anything. You have no resume. And you can't. So it's like so backwards. But I get it. It's not just about the best dancer or the best photographer, the best artist. Like, okay, I do a lot of photography and, and a lot of people hit me up on Instagram. Would you like to collaborate? So basically what they're saying is, would you like to do free pictures of me so I can put them up on my Instagram? Now, there's a lot of beautiful people out there, and all these models are setting themselves up for – I used to I used to model, believe it or not, back in, back in my day. And McCarty. when you go and you do something <laughs> – when you go and you do something <laughs> for free, for free, the other person seems like they have the power. You know what I mean? The one that's organizing everything, the photographer, the one that's... So you're going in as, as the artist and you're not being paid. So they're like, well, you know, this is free for you. So will you please do this? Will you please... You know, I, I remember being on a shoot and it got a little weird mm-hmm. like that. And I'm like, no, I'm not taking all my clothes. It's not that kind of photo shoot. Like, I no. <laughs> but I mean, if you pay for it, you know what I mean? Like, even even, even like a, a testing rate. Yeah. This is, this is what I would recommend to the photographers is that everybody has, like, in, in the dance world, they have, um, what's the alliance, dancer alliance rates now? Mm-hmm. They didn't have that before. I think that's so amazing. Like, there's a standard for something like that. So I think for testing, because you're going to a studio, there's electricity, there's the lights, there's the equipment, there's, there's things there. There should at least be a testing standard rate if it's still collaborative. Yeah. So then you're getting something, the artist is getting something, and... It's not this free, free, gimme, gimme, gimme mentality for everybody because mm-hmm. nobody wants to pay or work or support art, but they want everything for free, and then they're complaining when they're not working. Well, I think – and I think a, a point that you bring up that's really important is what are you telling the universe that you want in your life? If you are only doing free stuff, you're not putting it out there that you want to work. Do you know what I mean? You are saying, I'm good enough to just do everything for free. Cool. That's fine. But at the same time, I think you also have to then draw a line to tell the universe as well. It's like, I want to do free stuff when it works for me, when it benefits me, when I need the experience, if I need to help a friend out, cool. But I also right. want to work professionally in whatever format that is. And I think you also have to then learn to say no so that the universe understands that you understand your value and your worth. So you can do stuff to help, but you also have to have someone pay you for what you're working on. I mean, what's the point, Absolutely. right? Because right, right, we live right, in a world right. that's, that is really um, uh, run on money. It's run on money. So we have to find that balance. We have to find that balance. I mean, I look at it like it's, it's energy. Mm-hmm. You know, money, money is energy. And if I'm supporting you to come and teach for me or do something for me, I would absolutely pay you. If the budget is not as big as it could be, then I would either tell you that and you could do it if you want, or I would find another choreographer up and coming that's not your rate. Right. But I wouldn't expect anyone to do it, especially at this point, for free because it's just a it's just it's just bad. It's just it's just bad. Well I think too, I think that um, due to social media and how influencers have become a thing, people uh, do focus a lot on self right now because they're making their brand, they're making their page, they're making their content. And a lot of people uh, can get caught up in that for it just being about themselves. Mm -hmm. Is that bad? I don't want to say it's bad. Is it, is it, is it interesting because of what technology has moved towards what our, our social media platforms have moved towards? Absolutely. Why? Because let's just say you were just starting. Here's a perfect example. You're just starting to get some followers. And then all of a sudden people always hit you up on your DM saying, hey, DM me because I, I, you'd be a great ambassador for blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. What is that? I get those all the time. Okay. All that is is a company <laughs> saying we want you to be an ambassador of our product, but, but we're not going to give it to you for free. We want you to pay for it. So basically it's a selling situation. 
Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, great, well, I'll give you 50% off everything you buy and then just take pictures and post and you're an ambassador. No, no, it's marketing. A, market, that's marketing. It's a scheme. But within that is what is how people are operating, though. It's like, oh, well, you give me this and then I can do this with it. So uh, sometimes the art world closes down a bit when people are so involved in the self and only the self. But I also think that if you're not creating something new all the time, if you're not bringing in new energy, then at some point, if you're not working on that evolution, your product becomes stagnant. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Do you, did you have a gimmick that people yes. were focusing on? So right. I mindset since, is since, evolution. You know, the, since the... Um, COVID and all this crazy stuff happened and I started the Poetic Truth series, mm -hmm. I really stepped back and was it was a completely collaborative thing where I worked with artists that come in and just tell their story. And I'm telling you, I learned so much about myself and my art mm. and actually just sitting here talking to you and I think it makes you more creative to go out and do bigger things for yourself mm -hmm. and for your for your brand and for your product when you collaborate. And actually on one of the Poetic Truth episodes, we were interviewing Hayden. And Hayden's definition of success really stuck with me. Hayden said it's not about what you get. It's not a capitalist kind of mentality. It's about the co-collaboration and being with you know, people that are like you to create art and be in spaces where you can create and do you and, and to the fullest. That is success, and I think when people start changing their their mindset of what success is, you know, me being from a a, a poor mentality mindset, where you know we had nothing, so I think I've I grew up with the mindset of do everything for free so everybody likes you. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I don't know, we were just so used to not having stuff, and then I've seen I've been around a lot of people with money, and they treated every a lot of people like shit. You know, like some of these big producers I worked with, they were the worst to people. And I always said, God, if I had that, I would never be that way. But I think there's an in-between. You know, I, I really think there's an in-between where you can take care of yourself mm -hmm. and say, this is my value. This is what I will present to you or give you as a choreographer, photographer, director, and feel good about that. Because when, you, when people just want shit for free, it's like, you don't value me. Right. Do you think I'm just, you think I didn't go to school? You think I didn't put my time in to, to be this artist that I am? Is it really just about you getting what you want from me? Well, let me, let me shake this and throw it on your head for a second. Cause this was something I was uh -oh. actually thinking uh -oh. about today. Uh -oh. <laughs> shake it, shake it girl. Let me get my kombucha. Get your, not your kombucha. Oh, and then my light just cut off. Hold on. Let's see. <laughs> Did it get hot? It might've gotten hot. Hold on. <laughs> This show did. It got hot. It'll come back on in a second, folks. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, I like the mood lighting. It's more real. It's more you. It's more your brand. So what I was going to say, it actually is, you're right. Um, so what I was going to say is this, though. We allow people to treat us the way we allow them to treat us. So within what you were just saying we will not be taken advantage of in that way if we have a voice if we have self-respect if we have self-love if we understand what we are bringing to a project if we understand what we are bringing to this career what we are bringing to another person's energy so there has to come a time what is the mindset is don't let someone treat you differently than you will allow someone to treat you do you know what i mean so mm -hmm. part of your saying is like, well, people just think I'm doing it for free and blah, blah, blah. It's because, in my opinion, there hasn't been enough voice to say, no, like I'd, I'd love to collaborate when we have an idea that works together. But I also, you know, like you say, I run a business. So people are going to act like that. Why? Because there's a little bit more self value, but they go out on a whim saying, well, I know what I can bring to this project. So of course they'd want to work with me. Okay, but you also could say, I know what I'm bringing. I know that I was the one that was sought out. So you need me as well. So having, having, the, having the love to understand that your art is not for compromise, 
but it is it is Amen. it is it is a gift. And if you decide yeah. to make it a monetary gift situation, great. But I also think as an artist too, we can't forget that what is the first three letters of being an artist? Art. There's no there's no art in money. Like it doesn't have that. It, it, it we as artists, I think dream and hope that our our expression and what we create will give us the means to survive and live a comfortable life. I think the mindset you have to go into is that as an artist, that may not be the path, but what the path is, is healthy and happy and honest and authentic and self-discovery your whole life because you're being vulnerable and sharing that. And I think as long as you are continuing to grow as an individual, you are working on uh, what you want to put out into this world and leave here on this world, that the success will come. And that will come with money. That will come with whatever other things that you desire. But I think we have to remember as artists, it's not about the money. That's not why art was created. It's great if we can turn art into a monetary value. Absolutely. But if that's where we're operating from, it, it can sometimes poison the flow of creativity because now the, the the flow of creativity is dependent on another factor not creating the flow and then allowing that to be distributed to a monetary factor but we're putting money as the filter that the art is flowing through and those two things don't go together they don't go together the money has to come second or the money has to come first and then the art can flow because of what money was put in but just as artists it's not about the money. It can't be about the money. What it has to be about is authenticity, courage, bravery, vulnerability, rawness, relatability, all of those things, and then let the other stuff fall in place because you created something that is worth it. Amen. <laughs> I'm, to turn this I'm so on. glad you came up and talked to me today. Oh, my God. Me, too. I'm turn. Hold on. Let's you and your you and your ring light. Oh my god, it's terrible, right? I think it's because I have a ghetto like. Um, she she's still trying. It's okay. She's not coming on. <laughs> it's okay. No, we're so listen. These are these are these are short little 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 takes. Yeah. Uh, this is my first one, so I couldn't think of anyone better to have but you. I think mindset is so important. You've been consistent since I've known you at 19 years old to now being in your 30s. Um, 37. I am proud of my age. I love my age. Get it. Get it. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see all you do. And uh, it's inspirational always to talk to you. All right. Even as your elder. Even as your elder. <laughs> Shut up. No, listen. I, you know, I, <laughs> thank you for having me on. And, and I think it's, it's wonderful. I think an example that you set, though, too, is that you can always learn something. You can always continue to learn something. And I think that that is, you, you know, you have a true path of an artist. You follow your instincts and you, and you follow the, the natural progression of what things interest you. And then you dive into that. That is listening to Here the I universe. Am. So no, <laughs> Here I am in my studio. You're doing but great. But I do have the, I have that business mentality too of think and grow rich and mindset. And sometimes that get, does get conflated because a lot of people in the business world, it is about bottom line and money. A hundred percent. Yeah. But I, I would rather go the other way that if you are on point with your brand, you know your value, and you're treating everybody with respect, I think money just comes easy that way. You don't even have to search for it. Mm -hmm. And then you can use this money energy to put back into the universe and keep creating. Because to me, art is all creation. It's all, that's what I get excited is creating stuff, mm -hmm. creating this podcast with you and Renzo. Like, I love this stuff. This is yeah. the good stuff. So thank you for coming on. Is yeah. there any final words that you would like to give to our – to our audience yeah uh two little things one i think it is it's find the balance between art and business it's not one or the other we don't live in that era of time anymore business is so important as your art so it's finding the 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 happy medium between that so that one doesn't overpower the other um and the other thing i'll say is um you can never learn enough about yourself and you can never learn enough about the world. So continue to be curious about people, about life, about your work, and eventually become obsessed with it. 
become obsessed with how well you are doing on your own journey and bring love to that because it has the ability to leave a lasting imprint on this planet. Become obsessed with what you do and love it because the rest of the world will believe in it. Kind of like your hairstyle right now. It's just perfect. I mean, do you like it? It's, just, uh, it's very, it's very Backstreet Boys. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's very equity eligible. Like it's like soap opera hair. It's like Wilhelmina's hair show. It's kind of like Elvis beats Ricky Martin. Oh Vito my Loco. God! No, it doesn't. Come on. It's a little Colin Farrell mixed with a little <laughs> David Beckham, Ryan Gosling, Wilhelmina free hair show. <laughs> okay, with a no light. All right, I love you, Boo, and thanks for coming on. I love you too. And just peace out and I'll talk to you soon.